Silvarum by Dean Cooter Narrated by Dan Bottomley Chapter 2 Wind Through the Leaves Welcome back, girls. Trelinia Woods smiled through a circular kitchen window that overlooked the foyer hallway. Puffs of steam billowed from an array of bubbling pots and saucepans as she perfected the finishing touches of their supper. She watched as her daughters stumbled through the front door and dropped their backpacks on the floor. How'd the map-making adventure go? she asked. Marie pulled off her mud-caked boots and socks and let out a sigh of relief. She unwound her bun, letting the long red hair fall to her shoulders. It went okay, but I'm exhausted, she said as she wiped a river of sweat from her brow and plopped herself on the hallway bench. We walked forever today. It was definitely entertaining, said Mackenzie. She eased off her boots and backpack and stretched out on the floor at the base of the front door. Entertaining, replied their mother. Let me guess, was Roger up to his usual antics? You could say that again, said Mackenzie as she locked her hands behind her head and stretched her legs out to their full length. She noticed a small hole had formed at the tip of one of her red socks and proceeded to wriggle her big toe through it. I hope you two are hungry, said Trelinia, disappearing from the window to return to the kitchen. I'm starving, Marie said. Trelinia removed a copper pot of stew from the stove top and carefully ladled the contents into three bowls. Using a wooden tray carved with intricate designs, she carried the bowls of stew out to the dinner table. The clinking of silverware and glasses danced through the hallway as she set the placemats. A comforting aroma of basil and thyme filled the house. Supper is almost ready. Please leave your muddy boots in the hall and throw those nasty socks in the washer. Wash your hands before you come to the table, and there's a basin in there to soak your feet. But be quick about it. Yes, ma'am, they replied. Mackenzie kicked off her sock with the hole and eased herself up from the floor. Marie slowly stood from the bench and followed her sister to the bathroom at the end of the hallway. They both moaned from the soreness in their feet. Can you hand me that lavender soap? Sure, replied Mackenzie. Marie whispered as she scrubbed the dirt and grit from her fingernails. Are you still telling mum about the runestone? Mackenzie wiped her hands and hung up her towel. Of course. Don't you think it's time we found out what Dad has really been up to? She asked. Marie nodded in agreement while she dried her hands and sat on a stool next to a clawfoot bathtub. She raised her sore feet and gently lowered them into a steaming basin of milky water. That feels amazing. I hope he's not in trouble, said Mackenzie. Trouble? I was thinking while we were walking home and I'm concerned about this Gothgar character he mentioned in his letter. Who is this guy? What is he? What is he? asked Marie. You mean, is he something other than human? Yes, or even worse. I can't imagine anything pleasant living alone in the Blackwood Forest. Based on the few maps that I've seen of that place, there are all kinds of weird and creepy things in there. Graveyards castles and other haunted stuff. That sounds like the last place I'd ever want to live, said Marie. But it seems that Dad has met this fellow before, whatever he is. Isn't that what he said in his letter? Apparently, when they were kids. Exactly. This golf car person was a kid once too, right? That kind of sounds encouraging. Monsters and ghouls aren't typically children, are they? Good question, 
replied Mackenzie. The sisters gazed in silence at the steaming liquid and drifted into their troubled thoughts. How was school today? asked Benjamin Woods as his children grabbed their coats and walked out the door. It was good, replied Roger. Bye, Mum, said Marie. Goodbye, dear. What are you guys doing tonight? The usual routine, said Benjamin. But I think we'll go on a big walk too. The weather is lovely this evening. A big walk, said Mackenzie. We're too old for those. Seriously, he replied. You're going to complain about big walks. When did walking with your dad stop being fun? Since forever ago, replied Mackenzie. I see, he said. Yes, Trelinia. We'll be grabbing a bite to eat and then taking the dreaded big walk together. See you later. Trelinia laughed. See you in a few hours. After dinner, they headed over to the park. Mackenzie and her father stood on the crest of a hill as Roger and Marie raced down a grassy trail and yelled at the birds. Dad, said Mackenzie. Yes? Why did you and Mum really split up? Hurry up, Slowpokes, said Trelinia from the dining room. Did you fall asleep in there? The stew's getting cold. Mackenzie blinked out of her memory. Sorry about that. We're on our way. Oh, Mum, it looks wonderful, said Marie when they finally sat down. Vermilion linen covered the dinner table. In the middle of a lace setting stood a large crimson candle. It was adorned with silver highlights and encircled with green fur clippings that Trelinia had gathered that morning when she checked the mail for the third time. Twinkling candlelight filled the room with a cheerful glow. Porcelain dinner plates gleamed atop emerald green placemats. The bowls of stew were still miraculously steaming, despite the amount of time that the sisters had spent recovering in the bathroom. Normally there were four places set, but this evening there were only three. Trelinia expected Roger to be in later that night, plus he had mentioned that he wanted to visit Murkresh. The old man was going to inspect his map. This looks spectacular, said Mackenzie. What did we do to deserve such a fine meal? Thank you, my loves, replied their mother. I felt like doing something special for a change. It's been so long since all of us have sat down for a meal together, and I feel like I haven't seen you in weeks, Mackenzie. Trelinia paused and gazed into the golden candlelight. To be honest with you, there's something important I wish to speak with you girls about. Marie and Mackenzie glanced at each other. But first, let's eat, she exclaimed, sitting up straight and placing her napkin on her lap. I know you're both starving. Tell me all about today's adventures. I want to hear what sort of mischief Roger was up to. The sisters stirred from their uneasy silence and began to eat. Marie dug into her stew as if she had not eaten in days. Well, said Mackenzie, our grand and marvellous quest began by climbing up to the top of that old elm tree on the edge of Mr Bluestream's property. You know the one with a clear view of the entire valley and village? Yes, I know the one, replied Trelinia. We spent a few hours up there at least, said Mackenzie. Roger spent most of the time on one side of the tree, cursing and grumbling with his map, while Marie and I sat on the other side chatting and looking out over the valley. The sound of the wind through the leaves was lovely. When it wasn't being disturbed by Roger's cursing, said Marie through a mouthful of stew. Indeed, replied Mackenzie. Once he finished drawing his silly map, we climbed back down. When Marie and I reached the ground, we looked back and couldn't find him anywhere. Marie giggled at the oncoming explanation. Well, what happened? asked their mother. Mackenzie cleared her throat dramatically and continued. As we searched around the base of the tree, we looked up to behold our dear brother's pants hanging from a branch by one of his belt loops. My goodness, are you serious? Yes, indeed. His pants were dangling in mid-air from a giant tree branch. Minus Roger, of course. Good grief, replied Trelinia. How in the world did he manage that? 
I can't even begin to imagine, Mum. But I do know that Marie and I watched him run like the dickens down the hill and through a field of pumpkins. He escaped into the forest. I'm pretty sure that he was covering his nether region with that big goofy map he had been working on all day, said Marie, proving, at the very least, that his map-making skills are useful for something. They burst into laughter. Mackenzie spewed a fountain of milk clear across her place setting and onto a piece of tree clipping. Marie snorted and howled with such ferocity that she had to struggle to prevent bits of stew from squirting out of her nostrils. Bless his heart, said Trelinia as she settled down from her own fits of laughter. We mustn't tease him about this, you understand. Promise me that you won't. Roger is extremely sensitive about these types of episodes. She paused to wipe away the tears with her napkin. We won't, said Mackenzie. It's just so ridiculous how he always gets himself into these situations. I wouldn't be surprised if a squirrel or some bird has already made a home out of his breeches, said Marie. All right, ladies, that's quite enough, replied Trelinia. We've had a good laugh at Roger's expense. Let's give him a break, OK? The girls eventually relaxed their fits of laughter with only the occasional outburst and uncontrollable giggle. Marie, said Trelinia after a few moments, would you please run to the cupboard and fetch me the container of salt? I forgot to refill this shaker. Yes, ma'am, she replied as she wiped her mouth and set the napkin in her chair. Trelinia took a sip of her drink and turned to Mackenzie. So, my dear, where have you been off to so often this summer? I'd really like to hear all about your adventures. Are you still working with your teacher? Mrs. Roberts, right? You know I've been working with Mrs. Roberts, asked Mackenzie. Of course I know. I'm your mother. What I'm not clear on is exactly where she keeps sending you. You know about my other trips too, Trelinia grinned. Mackenzie cleared her throat. Mrs. Roberts and I have formed a sort of partnership over the past year. She's been studying artefacts that relate to her research and sending me out to look for new specimens. What's her area of research? Don't you know? Trelinia raised her eyebrows. I'm sorry. I can't believe that you already know about this. I was actually planning on telling you about it tonight. I've been stressing out all afternoon. I'll be honest with you. I've known Mrs. Roberts for many years. Since we were kids. Mackenzie shifted in her chair. Your teacher went to the same school as your dad and me. That seems like such a long time ago. Mom! yelled Marie from the kitchen. There's no salt container in this cupboard. I've searched every shelf. Trelinia stirred. I'm sorry, dear. Can you please run to the cellar and check for me? I may have left it down there. Yes, ma'am, replied Marie. In addition to updating me on your progress at school, Mrs. Roberts and I still keep in contact on a personal level from time to time. She told me all about your partnership, and just so you know, I think it's a wonderful idea. Mackenzie let out a sigh of relief. However, my dear, said Trelinia in a serious tone, I would very much appreciate it if you'd communicate to me when you're venturing out of the village borders. You do realise that many places outside of Thorndale aren't safe, right? Mackenzie squirmed in her chair, lowering her gaze to her plate. Yes, ma'am, I know. Where exactly did you go this time? The girl muttered something unintelligible. I couldn't hear you. Can you please speak up? The old graveyard. Trelinia put a hand to her mouth. You went into that graveyard alone. What were you thinking? I was fine, replied Mackenzie, surprised by her mother's dramatic reaction. It's only a graveyard. I don't understand why you're so upset. Trelinia lowered her hand and placed it in her lap. You weren't fine, young lady. You have no idea of the danger you put yourself in by leaving the village alone and venturing into that dreadful graveyard. 
What's wrong with the graveyard? asked Mackenzie. I found it! exclaimed Marie in triumph as she carried a giant container of salt into the room and plopped it on the table. Silverware and plates rattled under its weight. Sit down, said their mother harshly. Marie surveyed the solemn expressions of her sister and mother. What's wrong? she asked. Trelinia took off her glasses and placed them on the table. She rubbed her eyes and let out a long sigh. Mackenzie motioned for Marie to get back into her chair. After a few moments, Trelinia looked back up and smiled at her daughters. She gazed at each of their faces in turn and nodded her head as if in silent conclusion. She acknowledged to herself the significance of this moment. It was the ending of one stage of their lives and the beginning of another. Girls, I think it's time that I tell you the real reason why your dad has been away.